Is the bike as stiff as everyone claims? Yes. Um, as compared to the Pinarello F10 that I had, um, this is so much more stiffer. Um, but if you know how to get the sweet spot of it, you love it. Welcome back to another video guys. Uh, today, we are here with Mr. Kenny. If you remember Kenny, uh, last time he was doing uh, a lot of track madon, track madon, uh, the face. We saw a lot of track madon <laughs> and a lot of SL7s <laughs> and all those right. This is Kenny. La. So yeah. Kenny, welcome back again to my show. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. We have a yeah. Cipollini, the one, um, with a Shimano Altegra Mechanical and a Corima WS Plus 47 in rim brake. Uh, Kenny, over to you. Please tell us more about your bicycle. Okay, um, this is the Cipollini, the one. Um, as you can see down here in just a flash, what I personally, what caught my eye on this bike was the details. The detailing was the one that makes me uh, jump onto it. The moment I saw it, and I took it off a friend. I almost had to rob him because of that. <laughs> because he was very reluctant to let it go. Yeah, um, like this thing is, what is interesting about this bike is the cut in, okay? The cut in and then the things like this. These are something very, to me, is very special. Okay, and you can see on the wheel up there and the fork having, the, 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 coming down this way, it's a very nice smooth up. Uh, the first time I saw it was these few shapes that, that, that attracted me. And then the best thing was this, uh, the seat post and over here, the interesting is this piece of cover. It's a very neat detail um, for them to cover up because actually there's another 20 mm spacer up there. Oh, but it's hidden away. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. So I think it's a very nice um, way to hide it. Very nicely done and typical of Italians again. Right. Mm. How much is this bike? Actually, I bought it off a, a friend um, below 6,000. Oh, okay. With the wheel set and everything, everything. here. Wow. Yes. Uh, mm. And you have Shimano Altegra Mechanical. Correct. Why not your, your beloved Italian <laughs> group set? <laughs> <laughs> I, tried to, uh, I tried to ask um, the local agent here for Campy EPS. Uh, it's costing more than 6.5 more than about six thousand dollars for it mm. yeah and and uh, but i was also thinking of trying out the altegra trail speed uh, so that was something that i'm trying to do the on the next upgrade okay having ridden the campy and the shimano which is which, which is your favorite and why shimano is really smooth but character wise and fun wise i find is still on the Quebec mellow because the downshift, the, the thumb when you downshift, uh, it's something I don't know how to explain to you, but it's really fun. When, when you kick on the downshift, it, 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 it reacts very spontaneously. All right. Why did you get this bike? Actually, it, it wasn't, it's more for the aesthetic look when I first saw it. It's like, wow, uh, can I have it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what is your height and the frame size? I'm 160cm and this frame size is extra small yeah. and it fits me well. Right. Mm. You have your slam, your stem is almost slammed all the way. I remember in the last interview, you said that this was your go-to bike, right? Yes. Is it still the go-to bike? Of course. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm preparing this bike and this coming weekend to do the Audex 200 again. Wow. Yes. <laughs> you, are, you are doing uh, super long rides on this bike. Uh. These Korima wheels, how, how are these wheels? I love it. Um, I actually got it serviced and through again after I got it. Uh, the only downside was that to through this thing, you have to take remove the tyres. Oh. Yes, yes. Because, because the nipples behind. All the nipples are inside there. Oh. Yeah, but once you have to get it sorted once already and now it's been with me for the last four or five months. Okay. I, I, I love it. You love it? Yeah. Uh, just now we were talking about the Korima WS S Plus or something, the one with the very unique carbon spokes. 
the one that I wanted to get. Uh, you were telling me there are some issues with that, those kind of spokes, right? I, I, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful wheel. Um, for sure, it, it is really a cheap magnet. <laughs> but to me, I find it's a bit too flimsy for me. Yeah. yeah. So, and especially the price is more than $6,000 so for a pair price of wheels. the bike. Exactly, <laughs> yes. Uh, and you're on still on rim brake. Mm. How, how is it like braking on rim in this wheel set and this bike? On this one, after I changed it to the original red Korima red uh, brake pads, um, now even in the wet, it's still quite usable, I must say. Mm. Yeah. Like I said previously, instead of 30 meters, maybe you allow yourself 40, 45. Yeah. Once, if you have that in your mind, I think it's uh, quite safe. Do you, do you need to buy specific brake pads for this kind of wheels? Or you can use any third-party brake pads? I'm really not sure, you know, but for all the rim brakes that are the running on carbon wheels, I prefer to go to the original maker, okay? Uh, for Campy, I'll go for the Campy brake pads, and then for this, I, I go for the original Korima. Right, mm. and this is their own in-house hubs, the yes. Korima hubs? correct. Uh, how is 47 millimeter that? Is it too shallow, too deep, or just right? I think for, for me, I don't go 60 km per hour. Um, at 47, I think it's good enough to roll. Uh, enough on West Coast Highway, TMCR. Mm. Mm. I think it's easy for me. Uh, okay, what is the weight? The last time I weighed it was maybe about 7.7, 7.8. Do you mm. think that's a heavy, heavy weight for a rim brake bike? I think for such a frame-wise, I think, yeah, um, 7.7-ish 7 is reasonable. Mm. Mm. Do, you, do you think it's hard? Do you, do you climb on this bike? Yes. Is it okay? It's okay. Um, three laps only on Mount Faber, mm. uh, so I haven't done so much <laughs> yet. On three laps, or still survival. Yeah. When do you choose a steel bike or this, this carbon Cipollini? Um, Honestly, this is the only carbon bike that I'm keeping. The rest of the bikes are all carbon, uh, all steel or titanium. Mm. Mm. Uh, any okay? Let's talk about the the frame itself. It's a very unique design. Mm. You look at how curvy the fork is, and especially the down tube. Man, I've never seen this in any bikes before. <laughs> it's like a W. Yeah. Uh, what is the function of this? I mean, probably aerodynamics, lah, right? Uh, Honestly, I'm a sucker for design, engineering and design. When I first saw this bike, that was what caught my eye. How come normally we see this cut out on the, on the seat tube side, eh? uh, quite common. But on the down tube, it's very, very seldom, maybe on TT bikes. Okay, but when I saw this, 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 and this one whole piece that even have a little fin coming out, and the way the fork, uh, have a curvature on the fork, okay, it was this whole package frame and the fork that caught my eye. Right. Yeah, it was love at first sight. Mm. Does Cipollini still sell this exact model, the one right now in the latest model? Do you know? E yes, I'm quite sure they have the new colorway for it, um, but it's still called the one. And then the latest one is what? AD1, something like that. But the shape is more or less the same? Um, the AD1 is very different. Yes, the, the, uh, the, the current models of the one is still 90% the same, yeah. yeah, but the new model, yeah, totally surpassed everything else. Do you think this frame is still relevant in 2022? For me, I like the shape of the frame. So whether, um, it's not fashion, it's a bicycle. Um, I rather, if something that you're happy with, you will want to continue riding that bike. Uh, purely, this is uh, something, a very copy top bike. Okay, um, with all these angles and all that, with a single piece monoclock, yeah, on the whole frame itself, is I, I, I find it, I like it. Okay. Mm. Uh, is this made in China or made in Italy? <laughs> uh, this one again is made in Italy, Italy. Okay. Yes. They don't have Chinese people in Italy working, lah. <laughs> Sensitive, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, but if on. you but if you really look into the 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 all the YouTube videos on Cipollini on this particular bike, um, this is actually one whole solid piece on their mold, mm. okay, and how they mold it up. Uh, so that's why they are able to have a very stiff bottom bracket. Mm. Will you stick to rim brake bikes? 
I still love it. Uh, I haven't found a disc brake bike that makes me jump. Yeah. So maybe you haven't found the one. Yeah, maybe maybe the, the Atos could be something mm. from out of S Works. Do they, does actually Atos do they have it in rim brake? I don't think so, right? It's I don't disc, think so. Right? Yeah, only on the disc. Oh, if actually they made it into rim, I think that bike would be super light. The fact that mm. the frame is already light, uh, Exactly. But it's on this, so maybe a bit compensated by the weight yeah. and penalty. Yeah. yeah. And you have this uh, sticker over at your seat stay. Mm. Uh, doing is easy, thinking is difficult. <laughs> Please explain. Because last time I saw this and I thought it came with the bike, but no, you told me <laughs> it's not. <laughs> no, um, this is uh, Kenny's slogan. Um, <laughs> because uh, a lot of times in, in life, we, we tend to think too much. Okay, and before even think, you think so much that you don't dare to start doing it. So somehow this was a revelation to me a uh, couple of years ago, and I started on all these bicycles to paste this slogan. Mm. Yeah, doing is easy, thinking is difficult. Wow, so inspirational. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last question. Uh, last two questions. Where is the oversized bully? Why do I need that? <laughs> Again, this I'm just a uh, endurance. I like to go endurance rather than chong TMCR, uh, like some of my good friends do. Um, so, on my type, my type of riding style, I don't think I need that oversize. Mm. Mm. Uh, what do you dislike about your bike? Currently, now again would be on the handlebar. Um, I'm trying to see if I can get a aero bar that can fit the, to the, the blend into the look of it. This is a Dida Zero aluminium yeah. It's an aluminium, yes. It's an aluminium uh, uh, handlebar. Okay. Mm. I think Dida has like the Super Zero, which is actually an aero carbon. Correct. That one yeah. looks quite nice. But I don't know who sells Dida in Singapore. Do you know? I have no clue. <laughs> mm. We'll move on to the Instagram questions. If you guys want to ask your questions, follow me on Instagram and you'll get the chance to ask your questions for the next bike. Kenny, are you ready? Okay, let's try. First question, are the Corima wheels any different to ride than other carbon wheels? Um, maybe on the hub design, the airflow on the hub itself, um, it's very easy to, to spin off on this particular wheel as compared to the Bora that I had, the Campagnolo Bora. Um, so for some, whatever reason, um, I, I, I like this wheel set. Yeah. So you have the uh, Campi Bora and mm. this is the Korima. Which is the favourite? Korima. Really? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Is it because it can spin fast and maintain speed? Yeah, it just picks off very easily. And at 47, I think, I think this depth is good enough for Singapore road. Is the bike as stiff as everyone claims? Yes. Um, as compared to the Pinarello F10 that I had, um, this is so much more stiffer. Um, but if you know how to get the sweet spot of it, you love it. Okay, why do I say that? Um, on the recent Audex 300, when I tried it, it was so fun to ride. A lot of my friends are already struggling after 250 kilometers. Mm. Okay, um, and this one just keep going. The bike just keep me going. Right. Mm. What does RBK stand for? Road bike 1000. The previous model was 1000. Oh. Yeah. So they shorten it to RB1K. Oh, it's RB1K. Yeah, it's oh, a RB1K. Okay. I see. Mm. Oh, interesting. Um, okay, I don't know if you can answer this question. The question is, how does this model, Cipollini, the one, compare to the other model like Bond? Mm. I think Bond is something more easier to ride more uh, friendly, not so stiff. And a few of my friends riding the Bond, Bond 2, they actually take it to go climbing. Yeah. So Bond is a climbing bike? D Dolomia will be the actual model for climbing, oh. the latest one. But Bond itself is good enough for easy riding. More, I think more on the comfort side of things. So it's not as arrow as this? No. Okay. Mm. What do you do to keep the white frame white? Does it turn yellowish as time goes on? Um, very simple. I don't, I, uh, white color, don't put it under the sun to shine for no reason unless you're cycling it. Okay, give it a good wash. Um, I always wax and polish them. 
Yeah. So what bags do you use? The the one that I use for my motorcycles. Oh. Yes. Does it actually work? Yeah, I don't care. It I just makes just it shiny, lah. Yeah. Oh. Ex- exactly. It takes away all the some of the grease and then the um, the S one thousand actually um, the 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 paste. You just put it on and then just uh, use a damp cloth to clean it. It's, it's very easy to maintain. So from the day you got it until today, did it turn anywhere close to yellow? No. Did it turn a bit yellowish or no? No. Be very careful. Um, on this, I saw someone with a China re- uh, China China yellow China China pilu China pi China China pini China pini yeah. Uh, that one really turned yellow. Okay. Um, it's really become like yellowish color. Uh, so I know that one um, is not done. It, that was the first giveaway. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Are you wearing physics shoes? This physics? This is Gurney. Oh, okay. I think maybe in the photo that I posted, you were wearing physics shoes. Correct. What physics shoes are those? Uh, physics R3. Uh, yeah, that was the one I, my white color shoe. I, I'm, a, I'm just a recreational cyclist. So I only have one black, one white. Oh, mm-hmm. so actually the question is why, uh, how are the physics shoes, the R3? It's, it's comfortable. That was actually my first pair of cycling shoe. Um, yeah, until now it's really for 15, 16 months. Mm. Um, still going very well. Comfortable carbon, carbon base. Uh, but I found that these Gurney shoes at 120 bucks uh, is value for money. What brand is this from China? Gurney from Italy. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. Yes. So it's, uh, it, it serves its purpose, I must say. Ah, yeah. Cool. I, I always like to find some alternative to, to the quality and price. Which is the best shoes that you have used? This one, although it's cheaper, but it's not so stiff like the Physic. The Physic shoe is very, very stiff. Ah, so this is one is comfortable. Okay. Mm. Um, will you change to a Campy group set on this bike? Like I said, I, I was looking around for it. But for this one, I really want to go DI. The, the okay. Um, so I'm looking forward for the Altegra. Di2 trail speed rim. Wow. Yeah. Rojak lah. You mix Japanese and Italian. And a bit of French. Yeah. <laughs> and a bit of French. Yeah. As long as it gets the job done and the way I like it, and because Campy EPS is quite difficult to get a full set now. Yeah. 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 I think everywhere you know it's hard to get stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is uh, meant to be a joke, eh? How do you pronounce Cipollini? Cipollini? And will you be mad when there is a number two? The, the two? <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I first saw this bike, I call it Chippo. <laughs> As a Singaporean way, C-H-E-A-P-O. Huh. Uh, Chippo. Then, then you know it's realized it's C-I-P-O. Uh. But yeah, I mean, models can come and go. Um, the one, the two, the three, like F. 8, F10, F12. It's just a progression of the models. But it has been stuck with the one, right? It has always been the one. Mm. It has never been the two or three, right? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Even like the, 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 the newer models, every year, it's just the one. It's just that the design just changes. Correct. Okay. Yes. What helmet are you wearing? Ah. MET. Oh. Which but one is this? Huh? Which, which model? No idea, man. Is As it the Vinci? Vinci? Yeah, MET meets... Um, I don't know. Go down to bike settlement. They were able to tell you. Ah. I got it from there. Okay. Yeah. How how do you like the Matt helmet? It's comfortable. Um, round Island, one hundred and fifty kilometers, no issue. Uh. Ah. So I think this is something that I will continue to buy. Right. Mm. Uh. Is this bike ex- the exclusive road bike in Singapore? Is this the only one in Singapore? Or have you bumped into anyone with another? I, bar, I saw another gentleman in this colorway, exactly the same, a larger size, uh, once at Changi Village. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe twice I saw, uh, I, with this one included, maybe I saw three on the road. Okay, so there are a number of people oh, of course, of course. Cipollini. Mm-hmm. Right. Do you smoke and ride at the same time like Chip- Mario Cipollini? <laughs> no, I don't have that muscle. If not, I'll be bare and then cycling again. No, no, no. Okay, last question. Steel is real. That's what you said in my last video. Mm. Let him has a feel of steel is real. <laughs> <laughs> Sell your Cipollini to make way for another steel bike. Um, no, be very careful. Every bike serves its purpose. Um, 
the steel is very comfortable then but as i said in the previous video also uh, you can never fight on the efficiency of a carbon we want to go fast and all that um, yeah so i rather keep one one carbon and i think this is much more affordable than trying to go for any other uh, Italian brands lah. Right. So yeah, I will still continue to keep this baby. Okay. Mm. Uh, that is the end of the interview. Mm. Um, I got one more last question. You own different bikes, right? What other bikes do you have? So far, we film your uh, what's the, the legend? Bike? Legend. Yes. <laughs> Cipollini. Mm. What other other ones you have, man? And I still have one more um, officially Matteo, the Green Monster, and then another steel bike is the Pegoretti. Okay. Hmm. So if you guys want to see his other two bikes, just comment on below which one you want to see next. I'll come here and uh, we'll ask Kenny again if he can let us film his bikes. Yes. <laughs> uh, Kenny, do lah the Madone. Ask don't people ask to film Madone SL7. <laughs> <laughs> no, I already got a nice sticker out of, of myself with the Madone signature. <laughs> Eh, Madon, Madon owners, please don't kill me. It's a joke, okay? I love the shape. I love the Madon, actually. Just that I'm jealous and I can't afford it. <laughs> uh, Kenny, thank you so much for coming today. Uh, you guys want to watch my videos, you can listen to them on Spotify. I'm on TikTok as well. So if you want to feature your bike, just DM me on Instagram and then we can sort something out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you, Kenny. Right. Cheers. Bye -bye.